everyone quite so soon. But go get them in. Very well, sir. <coughs> collecting arms. 
He went down the storm drain, and there wasn't even a splash. Astounding. And then, as you know, this afternoon, Thaddeus Russell went missing from the cell in the village dungeon. If only there was some pattern, some link, some chain. All these men are so different. Can you think of anything, Herr Baron? Uh, well, you see. Hmm. Randolph Rendrell, a rich man. Yeah. Hmm. Peter Payne, hmm. a poor man. Hmm. Indeed. Hmm. Bill Bolt, a beggar man. Yeah. Hmm. That's 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 a thief. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, can't say I do. <laughs> oh, well, Herr Baron, so sorry to have troubled you. And, uh, and what? I really must be going now. Uh, is the prefect of police sure? He does not wish to see the butterflies. Oh, uh, yes, uh, so much the time. I really must be going. It is getting so late and dark. Um, thank you very much. Oh, 
nothing, Gretchen, nothing. Now see here, is a spare bedroom aired and ready for occupation? I think that young man intends to stay tonight. And you do not object. I can hardly turn him out. You saw the way Daisy took him in charge. She seems to fancy him. Then, in the morning, things may be different. It all depends upon... It all depends upon what? Oh, nothing, Gretchen, nothing. I see here, with an uninvited, that is, an unexpected guest, we should all perhaps eat in the main dining room. Uh, you leave the bags where they are. I'll get more, take them upstairs later. Ends of the childhood, it was easy to send them away. But this young man, now she is grown, it may not be so easy. Yes. Yes, perhaps you are right. I wonder if I should... Uh... No, no, you tend to dinner. I'll see who's calling at this hour. Very well, sir. And that's the darling don't you just the door, and especially the guest room. That will be yours, of course. You should be quite comfy there. Yes, I expect so. Only, I wish it weren't quite so high. I'm not used to sleeping in a tower that overhangs a moat. Why, if I should arise during the night hours and make the wrong turn on the way to the bathroom? Yes, <laughs> a topple into the moat would be some of a shock, I expect. Still. All in all, you are a good swimmer. <laughs> yes, but when I think of the fall, at least 200 feet I make it, and then the plunge into the icy waters. Oh, don't foot over that, my dearest. Daddy's castle has a heated moat. A heated moat? <laughs> Isn't that a bit uh, unusual? No, not really. You see, the water has to be warm so that its continued temperature approximates that of a tropical river. Daddy says it's much healthier that way. For people who fall into the moat? Not see for the piranhas, of course. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> well, we're wasting time. Maud takes her bags up to the bedroom. Right. One's kind of the witch room. It doesn't matter. I don't think I'm gonna unpack. <laughs> oh, but darling, you must. I do so want you to be happy here. And that would be impossible if you didn't change your undergarments. <laughs> well, I suppose it'll be all right. Of course it will, Betsy. After all, I'm here so far. <laughs> oh, good. Then it's all settled. Come, darlings, let's go change for dinner. Lord, just bring those things to the upstairs hall. We can sort them out from there ourselves. Enough as it was, but now with strangers in the castle. Yes. It will be a bit awkward, but I'm sure we can manage somehow, as long as they all keep to their rooms. But what if they do not? In that case, they will have to be dealt with. <laughs> Gretchen, did you happen to hear what I was saying? No, no, sir. Good, good. Uh, but Gretchen, there will be one extra for dinner tonight. Fancy the loo, Daisy's college roommate, has arrived unexpectedly. I think so. Um. <coughs> she will sleep in the castle tonight? She seems plucky enough to try to. And why should she not? The bedrooms are spacious. The bedding is warm and soft. What could possibly disturb her? <coughs> Imagining things, I didn't hear it either. <laughs> but it must have been the bin. Yeah. I will go and put on another potato for Miss Blue, sir. Thank you, Gretchen. Oh, he's shrinking. He'll give the whole game away. Would you like me to see to him, Master? No, no. You take the bags upstairs. I'll see to Herr Randolph Rinkwood. Can you be sure it was he who called out? After all, there are three others down there with him. <laughs> Who else but the richest man amongst them were quite so picky <clears throat> under the circumstances? <laughs> <laughs> This is 
is the only dress in my <laughs> But it is good to see you too, Fraulein Daisy. You haven't changed. Oh, yes. I put this on not five minutes ago. No, no, you have not changed. You are the same dear, simple girl. <laughs> oh, but I'm forgetting my manners. Babsy, Frank, I'd like you to meet Gretchen Twitchell, our own old family retainer. Gretchen is not that old. No, but our family is. Oh, Gretchen Twitchell. That's an unusual name. There is something familiar about the sound of it. It sounds like <laughs> chewing. Like a rat gnawing at the bone. <laughs> now, now, Maud, you'll give Gretchen a small and head with all your flattery. But... Is that better? Oh, much. Much better indeed. Of course it is. That is exactly what it is. What else could it be used oh. for? <laughs> what? Are you not forgetting? The potatoes? The potatoes! Yes! The potatoes! Ah, yes, but stainless steel is so much harder to work with. He's digging. Thank you, Gretchen. If we don't find anything else, we will go. <laughs> Let me propose a toast to celebrate my daughter Daisy's happy homecoming and to a nice, short visit from her charming friends. Uh, Baron von Blitzen, I should not wish to talk under false pretenses. You see, I'm more than just a friend to Daisy. Oh? Well, that is not an awful lot more. <laughs> just somewhat. You see, um, well, I've known Daisy for four years now, and uh, while I have a rather nice job, you know, I sell bicycles. They're really the coming thing. The horse is as good as dead. And I would say I have a marvelous prospects. A brilliant future. You think so, eh? Well, yes, but then perhaps I have been a bit hasty. I mean, horses have been around a long time. Frank, really, this is taking forever. Daddy, dearest, what Frank is trying to tell you is that he and I have become... busy. <laughs> busy. <laughs> Mommy! Oh, a clue at 
I asked. And where did Mummy get her money? It was her dowry. When she married Daddy, Grandpa settled a small fortune on her, about 7,000 Gneisters. 7,000 Gneisters? In American money, that's only $14. <laughs> and that was 20 years ago. How could he survive? Oh, Daddy is very frugal. But of course, he has some income from his work. Aha! Now we're getting someplace. What is your fabulous work? He's some kind of <clears throat> scientist. Of course, his work is much too complicated for me to grasp, you understand? We understand. But I know it has something to do with life. Life? And death, of course. Daddy says that death is a part of life. Not the most popular part. <laughs> oh, I think I hear Daddy coming now. Perhaps he... No, no, don't mention this to your father. No, we wouldn't want him to think we were nosy. <laughs> oh, very well. Well, there it is. Tell the lady if I use the neck of the potato shaped like a head. Girls, I'm going to take it and say it like a fart. Would look silly. <laughs> Scout ring. Oh. <laughs> but let me go farther. 
Ah, yes, I can see it in your hand. You will go far. You will go very far. Is there anything in there about his engagement to Daisy? Engagement to Daisy? I'm awaiting the return of Daisy's father. He's just come down to the cellar. Oh, I see. If you'll pardon my curiosity, Baroness, what is actually in the cellar? <clears throat> Perhaps we will talk about that later on. Uh, right now, I... Ah, oh, but here's my darling Donald now. Richard, have you met all the guests? Well, with me. And who are you, child? I'm Betsy. You certainly are. It was your name, child. <laughs> that is her name. Betsy Ballou, my roommate from college. Oh, first a fiancé, then a friend. What else have you brought home with you? Oh, a very good report card. Oh, well, I suppose that's something anyway. <coughs> but tell me, darling, this man you seem determined to wed, how well do you know him? Oh, I know Frank inside and out. Why, just the other day we were outside and I recognized him immediately. <laughs> For Daisy, this is a considerable accomplishment. <laughs> Very well then, you both have my blessing. <laughs> Just another, we score two, Gretchen, then it'll all be over. Well, hurry up, you fool. Remember, you have to clear the dishes so I can wash up. All right, I'm not crazy about dusting anyway. <laughs> I think I hear them coming. Yeah, that should do it. Everything looks nice and dusty now. <laughs> <laughs> Because there are four Stunken, and they are coming here tonight. Are those the quadruplets you told us about? The yes. ones on stage to marry Daisy Vance? Yes. Hans, Fritz, Otto, and Heinrich. All brothers. All identical quadruplets. But why celebrate their foursomeness with the candles on the cake? Because they are coming here tonight. All of them. I find it quite amusing. For reasons quite beyond your comprehension. Today they tell you I am a scientist. You mentioned something of the sort, yes. What's the big idea? I did not know there was a secret, Daddy dearest. Else the information should never have emerged from my mind. <coughs> what a mind. <laughs> <laughs> Hush, well, it's, uh, our guests will soon be here. We must greet them in a mood of merriment. Yes, I do hope their journey up the cliff road from the village is without unpleasant incident. Why should it be otherwise? Oh, do you not know then the terrible things that have been occurring in the village these past few days? Gretchen told me all about it whilst I was out in the kitchen, helping her transfer the suckling pig from the roasting pan to the serving platter. Say, I meant to mention it at dinner. That suckling pig was simply delicious. Whatever did Gretchen stop it with? Why, nothing. It wasn't hollow. Daisy, you were saying <laughs> terrible things have been occurring in the village? Oh, yes. Shall I tell you about them? Isn't anyone going to ask me to sing? At <laughs> once. Uh, Baroness, would you like to favor us with a song? Oh, my, aren't you delightful to ask? <laughs>
didn't I be so impatient? Well, I'd better let our guests in before I grow impatient and depart. They would not dare. Just a pleasantry, my dear. Just a pleasantry. <laughs> Daisy, so we don't spoil the party mood when the guests come in, tell me now about the terrible things you are going to mention. Oh, that! Just some mysterious disappearances. A rich man, a poor man, a beggar man, and a thief. One a day for the past four days. How strange. And yet there is something oddly familiar about it. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> of Lord, he's certainly strange. But his manner is getting increasingly familiar. Where did he go? Boy, upstairs. Were you not watching? Well, yes, of course. It's just that when he came in from the kitchen, I thought he'd been to answer the front door, but he went upstairs. Oh, he's just probably lurking in the powder room. You see, Daddy knows how his presence unnerves people, and he probably <coughs> prearranged his departure to coincide with the arrival of our guests. Why, Daisy, that was an actual piece of logical deduction. I had no idea you were capable of such a thing. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> Mud always lurks in the powder room when we're expecting company. <laughs> Daisy. And I'm Daisy. 
engaged to, um, Daisy. <laughs> Can I get you anything? Cocktail, canapé, moonlight stroll. Just a minute, young man! Have you gone crazy? This woman is old enough to be your aunt! How the I? He was only being spent off his feet. Who <laughs> 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 take it to me? <laughs> Sending you down there. 
Hello? Maud will go with you. Roger! No! Ah, I was mistaken! The cast is on! The massive curry falls! The saintly water! Do not worry! I shall return! <laughs> Streets coming from the cellar. And you want to play charades? <laughs> Musical chairs? <laughs> <laughs> Will that be all, sir? A bit of hot before. That. I suppose so. <laughs> then I will say good night. Well? Good night. <laughs> <laughs> she sleeps in the kitchen. I did I beg your pardon? Oh, that's all right. What is Babsy? Babsy is your roommate. <laughs> <laughs> Not yours, hers. Oh, good. Good night, My lord, you're back. It's not his fault. Why is it? <laughs> Hanging around. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> good, good. Well, it's getting late. But you're not wearing a watch. Even if I thought it would still be getting late, wouldn't it? <laughs> He's got you there. <laughs> then why is he still here? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Maybe I should go out and come back in again. I know what. They are just not used to the mountain air. Oh. I don't follow you. I should hope not. How would that look? <laughs> They're doing it again, Master. Doing what? I don't understand. Daisy, dearest, have you forgotten the effects a rarefied air has upon the human brain after a few hours' exposure to it? I do feel a bit giddy now that you mention it. But he didn't mention you were giddy. I can't take much more of any jabbering. No, no, Molly, it's all right. The atmosphere of these heights has an effect upon the brain similar to an overindulgence in alcohol. They find it hard to grasp things. How long has Daisy lived here? Most of her life. That explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm beginning to see the thinner air up here. Plus the strain of our long journey. Not to mention all the wine and the brandy. You're not worrying, my friends. The lightheadedness will soon pass. But I must warn you, beware of the possibility of hallucinations. Yes, you may see or hear strange things, but do not take any notice. <laughs> How can I believe that? You're the strangest thing I've ever seen or heard. Oh, you do say the nicest things. <laughs> no, I don't. Really, I don't. Yeah. Well, it's getting late. Would anyone like it, night? No, thank you, sir. I sleep in the room. <laughs> <laughs> A little drink would be quite nice now, but aren't you being a little premature? Yes, you still have guests in the house. Oh, they can't leave. None of our guests can leave. <laughs> Ever? Oh, don't be silly, you two. Of course our guests can leave. I mean, they always have, haven't they, Daddy? Yes, of course they have. As far as I can recall. But not tonight, I fear, Master. The storm has washed away the bridge. They'll all have to stay here until the morning. <laughs> what then? The bridge can't be rebuilt overnight, can it? But in the daylight, there is a footpath one can use to cross the ravine. I would not try it in a thunderstorm. <laughs> well, if Maud wouldn't try it, I certainly wouldn't. Daisy, you don't have to. You live here. <laughs> Cater to the ravings of a lot of hysterical women. I am not hysterical. 
My sisters want to know what has become of their fiancés, and so do I. Yes, and what has become of my hats? And where has my frip gone? I cannot find my auto anywhere. Have you seen my Heine? I'll say I have. <laughs> Yeah. 
The jealous stuff would be thought we saw. He's certainly not here now. Oh, well, I'm getting sleepy. Why don't we all go to bed? That's a good idea, Walter. But how will my sisters get home? Ah, you didn't know. They must stay here tonight. What? Send the hours of darkness in Castle Pot Lesson? Fire husband, boy. The bridge is out. <laughs> oh, oh, well, in that case. Nighty nights. <laughs> something decidedly odd going on around here. Oh, good. Okay, but I still think there is something decided. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night. Quickly, Mort, we must begin at once. While the lightning from the storm is still powering the generators. Oh, yes, 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 Master. Go on, go on. I'll say that. You can't be quick out of it. She will return through here on her way to bed. Never fear, she never noticed anything. Yeah, but she's been to college now. <laughs> what if she actually got something out of it? She saw what she got out of it. Fancy Baloo at the college bicycle salesman. Yeah, I'm worried about him, Master. Salesmen are usually very shrewd, if you do me up, please. You know how clever a peddler can be. Nonsense. Anyone can pedal a bicycle? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hurry back! 
must use a heat generator while the storm is in the fight. Pack in a jiffy, master. Ah, the gun. Two person right. It got me to wondering, 
Master, would you mind speeding it up a little bit? The anaesthetic bottle is nearly empty. Yes, hurry, darling. Please. Go on. Without further delay, don't just stand there. Say something. Because when the anaesthetic runs out... Will you all shut up? I think we've done better. So anyhow, I knew I had on hand all the elements for the creation of the perfect man. All I had to do was take the proper parts and combine them. Hurry! Hurry! Shut up so as I can. Now, as a mad scientist, I decided to try an experiment. What? You? What? That? What? Kind of scientist? What didn't you know? Donald is a social scientist. Yes, he's even written a book on the subject. It's there on the coffee table. Yes, I've made it my life's work. How people get along? How they do not? How they may improve themselves. Oh! the It's uh, all gone. Calm yourselves. There's nothing to fear. Stand your ground and you shall see my experimental dream come true before your very eyes. No! Don't! No! Don't! No! No! no. Don't! What? <laughs> Sorry, I'm caught up in the river. <laughs> The perfect man. <laughs> oh, that's Hans Stethoscope and Randolph Redfield's golden watch. That's Fritz's wig and Peter Payton's ragged jacket. That's Otto's apron and Bill Bott's tin cup. And that's Heidi's helmet and Fabius Sossel's burglar mask. Puts them all together. They spell Marvel. Oh, shut your mouth, Gretch! In quite the way you all think. Actually, I'm merely... Frank! Maxie! Where's Daisy? Yes, where is my daughter? Why haven't you brought her? Daisy just... cashed... in... her chips. <gasps> She's dead? No, no, not at all. She just... cashed in her chips. She's been a big winner in an online poker game. <laughs> Randolph ran for a game. It's very hard for such a rich man to lose his cash so consistently. Oh, well, <laughs> see, he always tries to draw to an inside straight. Yeah. Is that what the cries in the cell were all about? Yeah. Well, of course. What did you think they were? Oh, nothing. Oh, hi, everybody. My, you're up early. Baron von Blitzen, I think we're all entitled to an explanation. And yet you are. But I think the first time did I find she had three older sisters who must all be wed before she could. I was desperate, downhearted, dismayed, distraught, all things beginning with the letter D. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought to myself, I had done some theatrics at school. I was a master of disguise. So it would be simple. I would bring three brothers to the village. They would be quadruplets and they would meet the sisters, get themselves jobs, and, well, the rest, you know! Not quite, Jaime. How did you propose to support so many wives, so many various households, and support so many jobs? Ah, as to the support, that was easy. Each Zitzen sister comes with a diary of 7,000 Gneisters! <laughs> I had nearly forgotten. And as to the support, I did not intend Apart from the household I would have with my Heidi, to, I would remain married to them for one moment after the weddings. <laughs> you planned to run off, desert me, make us think we were widow. That easy. That was precisely what he planned. Oh, Hans. Oh, Fred. Otto, me. I know it was cruel, heartless, base of me, but then I found that I was in love with. All of you. And I was caught in my own trap. And later the barons. Donald's trap? I don't understand. What was your trap, darling? I was certain that Heinrich knew the old jumping rope right. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, <coughs> I immediately contacted the four men I needed and persuaded them to help. They all agreed. One by one, 
They pretended to disappear. I was desperate. With all this dreadful vanishment creeping up on me, I knew that I was next. Rich man, poor man, beggar man, see, Hans was next. Of course, it would have been an easy matter for Hans to simply disappear. You mean turn invisible? Is yeah. such a thing possible? Well, they say such things are true in the old stories that gypsies tell around the campfire. Creatures you can hear and feel and sense, but yet are totally unable to see. Oh, even for that appointment? Stop it, both of you. <laughs> such things are impossible. Oh, this is the 19th century. Ah, and as more has said, it would be simple for Hans, Fritz and Otto to vanish as if they had never existed. Which, of course, they haven't. But thanks to my scheming with the first four men, it was far too soon. Too soon? <laughs> you mean that he plans that right after his bedding? How am I supposed to finish? I don't know what he planned. Isn't it obvious? Heinrich was going to marry Heather, then vanish, then Frieder, then vanish, then Olga, then vanish. Wait a minute! How does these vanish girls get into the act? <laughs> oh, no. It was silly, stupid of me. I thought it would be so simple. As simple as Santa Claus. What does he mean? Search me. <laughs> but Heinrich, the explanation, please go on. Oh, the rest is simple. When the four men came up here, I made them comfortable in the cellar knowing it would then be a simple matter to persuade Heinrich to come up here, along with his imaginary brothers. Uh, and it was too, with all this dreadful vanishment creeping up on me, I dared not stay in the village. So, when the invitation to the castle came, I jumped at the chance. Most people jump when they are invited here. And of course, while Hans was in the bathroom, I was just across the corridor in the powder room. In the darkness, it was an easy matter for me to steer his stethoscope, then Fritz's wig, and then Otto's apron. <laughs> By the time I came up as Heinrich, I didn't go upstairs at all. I advised up. <laughs> but how did you keep up the deception on your way to the castle? Yes, riding in the carriage with our four fiancés. That's easy. Whenever anyone goes out at night in Transylvania, it feels a sailor if you keep your eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad the mystery's all solved. Now, who wants to play some poker? But where are the venue for playing this? Oh, I cleaned them out. They're oh. on their way home by now. Oh. But Daisy was... Sister, Heinrich. Yes, who? You must choose among them. Why? What? what? I said why. After all, if Donald is the law... He can change the rules! Oh. Of course! So, that is it. So this means yes. you can marry all of us! Oh. Then would you like to play some poker? <laughs> Daisy, what is this constant return to the one subject anyhow? Oh, you wouldn't blame her, Babsy, if you'd seen that cellar. It has everything a game's room should have. Pool tables, gambling tables, a wet bar, a big black coffin, ping pong paddles, poker chip. A big black coffin! It is nothing. Of course not. A mere decoration. Right in the room. But a coffin? Why? Yes, why? No, no, mustn't pry into family secrets until you're one of the family. Speaking as one of the family, Herr Baron. Yes, yes, of course. I will begin the ceremony immediately. As Donald Darren von Blitzen, sovereign ruler of the castle von Blitzen, and all persons and properties that inherit thereto, I can marry you all right now. But I want to marry Heine. He needs to perform the ceremony. Oh, good. Now, I have Wait, Daddy. Why not marry, why not marry me and Frank, too? After a four-day engagement. Are you sure you know your own mind? What mind? Darling, don't. <laughs> this man has not even given you an engagement ring. He has given me something even better. <gasps> An engagement bracelet. Daisy, that is a bicycle clip. <laughs> <laughs> well, business has been kind of slow. The five barons of Eden, the wedding. Yes, of course. Now, I suppose vested in me, by the atmosphere of the place, is ridiculous. Preposterous. Laughable. Master, it's nearly dawn. Oh, whoopsie, better get the robe on. Come on, position, everybody. Wait, we must have a rice. Can't have a wedding without some rice to toast. We are all out of rice. Oh, I have it. Powder. Gretchen, go to
is a powder bowl and get some talcum powder. Darling powder, jobs are hard to get. <laughs> oh, that woman, what I'd like to do to master! You promised, remember, as soon as your experiment was over, I could do what I will with Gretchen. Right, like Maud, my experiment is over. So oh, Gretchen! But what do you want, Maud? What do you want of me? I want to marry you, of course. What did you think I wanted? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, very well. Tell us, please. We will skip the powder throwing. Let us get on with the ceremony. But Gretchen, you're going through with this. You're going to marry Maud. That's the heart. I'll send me to my friend. Oh. Not me to my auto. Oh. Pinch me to mine. Oh, you know. <laughs> now then. Why is the powers best in Frank, you? wait, hold my hand, or already might not count. Really? Frank, you look thirsty. Why don't you go get a glass of water, or whatever's on tap around here? Great idea. Oh, but Frank! Master, the sky and sun will peak over the mountains in but moments now. Do you all take each other for your lawful wedding husband to write? We, we do! do. Right, if you will excuse me. Hurry, darling. Here you are. But he forgot the most important part. You're right. Don't hold. It's been a very, very long night. Don't be long, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes the poker game. Oh, I'll play. You will. But well, what about your wives? Well, they each have separate bedrooms upstairs, and I have to decide which stone can I have before I go upstairs. So I'll start marking the cards. Oh, good. Let me see now. Him, Frank, Bebsy, more Gretchen, Mommy. Daisy, I don't think you understand. This is our wedding night. Yes. We still can you see? A daddy who sleeps in a coffin, a chance to sell bicycles in the Carpathian Mountains, and fourteen dollars worth of ganisters. Oh, I'll manage somehow. <laughs> oh, you're so noble. <clears throat> well, I can't break our engagement. I just can't. So I love my daughter. I can't get this bicycle clip off my arm. Then why don't you keep it as a keepsake? Yes, why don't you, Daisy? Because, my darling, if you do not marry me, whom will you find to marry? Oh, um... Babsy! Oh, I could not ask that of her. Sure you could, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's also bewildering, confusing, hard to comprehend. She says that about turning a door knob. Oh, it is a deep decision we must make! <laughs> Is there a back way out of this place? Certainly. You can't miss it. Which way do we go? Yeah, well, go, go straight through the kitchen, right? Part way across the graveyard till you come to the big stone print. Take a left there uh, until it. Just beyond the vultures, nest. Oh, there's a phone in the kitchen. Why don't you call a cab? Great idea. <laughs> You, but we're sure gonna try. Well, guess I'd better go explain things to Daisy. Well, if you're not back before supper time, we'll understand. Well now, darling. <laughs> <laughs> the time has come for me for the secrets of that dread journal. No, maybe you're right. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? Bring it here. <laughs> the secret of life, life is... <laughs> so that's all it takes to live forever. You were right. No one must ever know what is in this book. We must never tell anyone what we have found. <laughs> sound like Heinrich? No, that's the dramatic critic of the Malden Parish magazine. <laughs>
he's not getting any younger. <laughs> We forgot our luggage. Who's so? Oh, look! It's an absolute stranger! Are you sure? <laughs> he seems strangely familiar. Who oh, are you, strange person? <laughs> oh, uh, my name is Oscar Stumpen. I was looking for the nearest exit. <laughs> if I didn't know better, I would have thought that was Eirik trying to get away from the Zitzen sisters. What makes you think you know better? Oh no, you are mixing me up with one of my cousins. People often mix us up. Or chief. I, I, I am in the picture business. I am a talent scout. Oh, oh goody! I'm marrying into the movies! Marrying? Who said anything about marrying? Oh, Mommy doesn't mind. So I better go through with it. What time is my screen test? Screen test costs money. Oh, don't worry. She's got a diary of 7,000 canisters. Come on, Frank. I can be out back any minute. Let's see now. Left at the vulture's nest. No, oh, I thought there was a shortcut past the challenge that page. Oscar, do you think I'm smart enough to be an actress? From what I have seen of them, you are probably too smart. Come on. Just imagine, Daisy Von Blitzen, a movie star. I know she'll make it. I've got a hunch. <laughs> it's so exciting, her first day home from college, jilted by the man she loves. Then a chance for fame and fortune. Off to Hollywood, bright lights, money, Heartbreak. Smiling before the cameras, sobbing herself to sleep nights. Then she finds a man. What will she do? Give up all her fame and misery? <coughs> choose poverty and happiness? What will happen to the poor girl? What <coughs> that didn't sound like Heinrich or Dennis Rosewell. <laughs> no, that was the playwright. You just come up with a much better ending than he did. <laughs> oh well, that's showbiz. Yeah. Happy honeymoon, darling. Happy honeymoon. <laughs> Could I just ask somebody who's put a tremendous amount of work into this play, our director Pat Struthers, to join the cast on stage? <laughs>